Hi, uh, so my name is Rahul Gonzalez, and uh, I run a small design studio based in Bangalore called Pixelot. Uh, I'm Akash. Um, I run a software engineering. Uh, that's a video game services company. Uh, two years old, based out of Bangalore. Uh, we are also the company behind RubyMonk. That's a platform for uh, learning Ruby online, and uh, that's what we are going to talk about. Uh, before we actually get into the design details, so this is the talk is actually about the collaboration between developers and designers and how we kind of came to some consensus that this is the best way to work. Right? We are still figuring out certain aspects, but whatever our learning has been in the first four weeks, we are going to share that. Uh, Uh, let me just give you a two minutes introduction. So this is the application that we are going to talk about. The challenges that we faced while uh, designing it was uh, primarily because of the interactivity. Um, so this is the application that I have some content for uh, learning Ruby, uh, Ruby is one of the programming languages. Uh, I have some code, people can type code over here and uh, actually execute it. It will get executed real time and so all the results to you. Like that's pretty much the whole application is. Okay. Uh, okay, leaving de developers alone is a bit dangerous. Uh, they don't really know how to control the emotions. Uh, so anyway, uh, going back to secret engineering, before we started the pro started Ruby Monk, uh, we have been being an agile company for almost two years. Agile by definition or by the philosophy, it's an iterative way of uh, doing development. Uh, what I mean by iteration is uh, I actually try to release a really small amount of functionality but a finished functionality uh, to my audience, get the feedback, use, like incorporate the feedback into the product, again get into another iteration and do it as frequently as possible. Now. In these two years, we have dealt with almost, uh, like I've personally worked with around four or five uh, applications uh, with my clients. When we started, we didn't really have any uh, design capability in-house. So we were forced to work with external designers. And most of the time, our clients will actually choose the designers that they want to work with. So we ended up working with designers in the US, UK, or Australia, which pretty much meant that there was no collaboration whatsoever happening, at least not face to face. Uh, one practical problem that external designers would face is if we want to work in iteration, that means I just care about one week worth of work. But if I'm dealing with an external designer, they certainly care about at least one month or two months of work because a client is going to give them the whole idea. And you can't really just design one component on a page. You actually need to have an idea about the whole holistic application and then only you can decide what the theme is going to be, how layout is going to be or what kind of feel a user should get when he's designing that application. So what it meant is uh, whenever we get the final design, we have almost complete product with us. Now there is a fundamental problem with having a complete design on day one and getting into iterative way of development. Because even if I gather feedback after first release, I can't really use that feedback to change the product unless and until I'm asking the designer to go and rework on it which almost always didn't happen because of financial constraints on the my client side. Uh, with RubyMonk, we had just one month to come up with the prototype, uh, release it to beta customers, get the feedback, again incorporate that feedback into the system and actually do a release. Uh, so the reason we had this one month deadline was uh, when we started with RubyMonk, we had uh, RubyCon the US, uh, happening exactly one month after that and we wanted to release the product uh, on that domain. Now with this design uh, restraint, uh, we had to really break this designer and developer disconnect that was happening because otherwise it would have been impossible to release a good product in one month. Uh, when we started, uh, we had a lot of ideas, like we had a lot of principles like we wanted to have a clean UI. Uh, we didn't really want any page scrolls happening. We had some very uh, weird constraints, like don't ask me reasons why we had this. Uh, then we had a lot of uh, functionalities as well where we wanted to create 
uh, gamification. We really wanted social integration to the application. We wanted to cover everything under the sun uh, when it comes to Ruby. We wanted an experience where people can actually type in code and actually run tests around those codes and tell them this is the aspect of your code which is wrong and this aspect you are getting it right. Now, the more we thought about all this, the more confused we get because we really didn't have any way of ideating. Right? Like, I have 10 concepts in my head. How do I even communicate with other developers, let alone with my clients to get feedback? We started reading a lot about uh, designing UX and we realized that there is something called wireframing. So, we started doing wireframings, which is this was the first uh, homepage or initiative one that I uh, came up with. Uh, this was the other one that a friend of mine came up with. Uh, what we decided to do is we had two parallel tracks, two wireframes happening and we'll keep on looking at each other's wireframe and based on that collaborate and take the best of both worlds. Sorry, the battery is on. Hello. So, uh, they wrote to me on... So, um, so this uh, Akash's colleague wrote May on the third of September. Then we said uh, we have basically uh, twenty working days to release a product. Do you want to help us design it? And of course, being a slight masochist, I said sure. You know, I'd love to do that with you. Um, I came in, and they were really at the idea stage. They said, we want to be able to teach people how to learn this new, uh, they want to teach people this new language, Ruby. And um, uh, they had some ideas. They said, we want a clean and minimal UI. Who doesn't, right? Um, and then, of course, they were, uh, despite not knowing anything about design, <laughs> they, of course, have very strong opinions. And um, they said, oh, uh, we love World of Warcraft. Let's let's make it like World of Warcraft, right? And, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so eventually, um, over the course of some drunken evenings, we came up with a basic theme for the application. We said, let's make it like a, you know, an RPG set in a Buddhist temple. It was at this point in time that we actually called, that we found the name of it. We decided, uh, we, we drew up uh, Trainer X. Uh, I thought that wasn't really ready for the market. The only, the only reason I had that team, I had to create a Git repository to check in my code. That's the only thing. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we came up with the name Ruby Monk, and then we went through a couple of stages of actually uh, picking out what would the visual sort of influences uh, be. So we uh, looked at uh, Bhutan. Uh, we looked at different monks. We looked at. Uh, Avatar, which is a series that a lot of people like. We looked at um, the general aesthetics that uh, are involved with monks, monasteries. We were looking really at Oriental uh, monks, not uh, Occidental. <coughs> and eventually, at the end of it, uh, in 25 days or whatever, we came out with uh, this particular design um, iteratively. We started here. This is exactly where we started. Um, Akash and his team had uh, put together wireframes which really just expressed functionality and um, they really liked tabs. Um, and, but this was a really good way to communicate. Uh, I found this extremely helpful as I'm sure any of you who are designers also do. Uh, because it, had, it was a complete feature listing or what they thought should be a complete feature listing. These are some more, uh, so these are other wireframes. This is the uh, core of the application. This particular page, for example, uh, showed that there was a problem, a space to enter code, which would then be evaluated and um, the results outputted, similar to the way in which it would work in a terminal or a, uh, an IDE. We eventually came up with, this was one of the, this was the design at the end of, uh, uh, the entire process, the design process. Um, similarly, uh, this was a problem page which uh, talks about, you know, uh, once you've learned a bunch of concepts, how do you put them together to solve a design problem. Similarly, we, we went from here to here. So, 
the uh, how did we actually go from A to B? That's really the interesting thing. Not because it was a terribly hard design challenge, right? The design challenge itself was minimal, but what the the biggest problem was making sure that we could do this in a short amount of time because there were financial constraints, there were constraints in terms of wanting to launch it at a particular event. So we came up with proto drawing, right? So we started off here. We started off with a really basic home page. Uh, and this is something that I can't stress, it has been a useful learning for me. How do you build something which, you're, uh, which you know, as designers, we have um, a very strong impulse not to show half finished work to our clients. How do you actually get over that? How, do you, how are you able to convey a concept which is half, completely half baked? Your design, uh, to your clients and allow them to see what it might look like or uh, allow them to uh, see your vision rather than what you have at a specific instance. So this was the end of the first day of our engagement, in fact. Uh, we put this very, very quickly together. We did some basic sketching to, because, and you can already see that things are changing around. We moved particular blocks of uh, content into different places. Um, the idea we chose color schemes which we thought might reflect the original theme of you know mon monasteries, monks, etc. Um, and then we got an illustration from a uh, uh, we got a, a, an illustration in, and then put bits of it together. So at all these stages, uh, we didn't quite have exactly what we wanted, but we were quickly able to iterate over less than a week. I think this whole process was the first. Yeah first seven days only. At which point we were here, which is, and this is pretty close to what we released at the end of the initial uh, 30 days. Uh, the application has since been, uh, we've iterated on it further, we've designed it further. Uh, it looks, I think, slightly better, but this is really where we were at, at the end of 30 days. We then changed, I then changed it around a bit. I don't know if you can see the differences, but toned down the colors, um, cleaned up certain things, uh, changed around the fonts. And this is um, this is an important uh, aspect as well because I, I was here and I wasn't terribly happy with this. But what I think is extremely important as designers is to go with uh, what your visual instincts are. This definitely was uh, according to the theme, but it's really it didn't feel right to me as a designer. And as developers, they were more than happy to take whatever I gave them. So, but it's important to um, listen to your uh, visual instincts or your design instincts and go with them. So we cleaned it up um, and so. Uh, so you can, I'll show the initial processes of another part of the application. This was the lessons page. We started off really simply, and this is another thing that's important. If there are existing design patterns which are good ones, if there are um, things which you can easily reuse, go for it. Essentially, at this stage, all that I did was add in a basic grid to the application and perhaps rationalize the fonts to some uh, degree. After that, we added in certain features. And the interesting way in which that we came up with features or decided to axe particular features that uh, they planned was the fact that we were co-located. We were working out of the same office, and um, which was extremely useful because there was constant con conversation about where the application should actually be going. And this is extremely easy then uh, for me to have a sense of the changing requirements because um, I was involved in the conversations which were happening. I could hear debates about whether features should be included or not right next to it. So that's another uh, important thing to take away. So we moved from here, went along with the uh, other visual theme that I went, uh, showed you, um, and then finally came out with the, uh, uh, the page that's online right now, along with particular uh, features that we thought of. So we moved from a wireframe to then a completed design. And uh, we this process as well took, uh, this was the first two weeks essentially. So we were within, at this point in time, we were on target more or less. Um, of course, the, the developers were holding me back. 
that's how it was <laughs> completely right so the collaboration was literally like this you know we were uh, there was the developer right uh, we were working together there was akash right next door and we could see each other's screens we could see the processes that we were taking if there were features which were too expensive either from a design state of perspective or from an engineering perspective we asked them right there and then there was no further reviews there were no uh, changes which occurred without everybody who was part of the project knowing about it at the same time when you uh, if you've ever had a client staring over your shoulder while you're designing you know that there's definitely going to be a huge amount of bike shedding right the people going to say oh that logo um, can we make it bigger oh, you know that font do you really think it belongs there yes <laughs> you just have to say no right that's an important thing um, when you're working with a product company or when you're working very closely with a collab uh, collaboratively there has to be a point at which somebody says okay the buck stops here we're not changing anything further you know it was nice to have this debate let's all go home so uh, similarly uh, there were features which uh, we designed in initially because we thought that you know gamification everybody's talking about it let's do it right it seems to be the uh, mentality of a lot of startups these days um so we put in the ability to track progress to have badges um we iterated it over it a couple of times um and then we just decided this was going to be far too expensive from an engineering perspective so we cut it we completely uh cut that right there and the scope management aspects of it are extremely important for an agile project so uh Like I was kind of wearing two hats uh, when while developing this pro product. I was a developer as well as product owner to say so. Uh, now, as a product owner, uh, one thing that I would like to say, or I would have liked to be, is uh, someone who knows exactly what I'm going to develop, have perfect estimates as developers, and actually meet the deadline. Obviously, it was not possible. Uh, every day morning and that actually holds to for till the last 30th day as well uh, we would meet in the morning figure out what all things have been developed what exactly uh, is the stage uh, design in uh, estimate the existing stories based on whatever work we have done so far and then based on that take a call assuming five days of buffer how much work we can get uh, we can get done and remove even features change certain features or even add more features We have gone to a stage where we a particular feature we actually removed and added twice, right? And all this while, uh, obviously he was taking the bread. Now this was actually a very important uh, point in the whole product life cycle, not exactly whole product life cycle, but for the MVP is one week uh, before the actual release. We had to take a call that we have one week. We have certain really important features that we feel are important uh, to be developed. Either we can complete those features. or we can just stop the development where it is and just make sure that the product that we are releasing is finished and it wasn't an easy to easy decision to make uh we had so the so, uh, social aspect social integration that we showed earlier that is one thing that we removed on this day uh the challenges or the badges that you saw is something that we removed on this day we actually wanted to integrate gamification in terms of you getting score and then you sharing that score with your friends we removed all that on this particular day And it was a really, really good decision. When we started, uh, we wanted to pretty much ship something like this. You know, we thought it's possible to do it. Somewhere in the middle, we thought this is what we are going to do. And in the end, we shipped this. But trust me, it is still more than what we should have shipped. We should have shipped a lot more early. But all these changes that you saw made a huge impact on the design. At least it floats. Yeah. So. Uh, How exactly did we make those decisions? How did we actually decide whether we want certain feature or not? Uh, like this is, I'm not sure. You know, this is not really a part of a developer design or collaboration. But you can't really uh, take any calls unless and until you are becoming a product owner, right? Like you are completely involved into the process. And the best way to get involved into the process and understand the product is not to look at it from your perspective, but look at it from your user's perspective. and it gets really really tricky to do that because once you start looking at an interface for 7 days 8 days 10 days right 
you you just become blind to its uh, negative aspects you just feel that whatever you have in front of you is perfect and that's where showing it to people who are not used to that interface becomes extremely important just to uh, give you some uh, example if you can see that uh, we have this uh, really cryptic uh, error message over there as a developer and my target audience is developer uh, i really like this particular message because it told me what exactly is happening within a particular spec but when we actually started showcasing this product to other people and actually we showcased just uh, this screenshot we didn't even actually showcase the actual product a lot of people told us that they didn't really get this it's just too confusing and that's when we removed this uh, the feedback cycle itself doesn't have to be after you have released the product you can actually or you must do it even before you start writing the first code we started getting feedback even on this so uh, when rahul came in we already had my wife or anyone else even people who are coming in my company for interview will just like make them sit over there and go through the bar bar and that actually worked very well uh, when rahul joined in we had these half baked sketches like there is some uh, sketch over there you are not able to see it there uh, we even showed these sketches to other people and tried to get feedback means you just have 30 days to release you want to really afford to complete everything and then get the feedback once we were done with the development and that's the reason we actually stopped seven days before the release uh, we started showcasing our product to certain uh, private uh, customers uh, basically people who understand where we are coming from what our limitation is and we actually explain to them what the idea is going to be and get the feedback uh, for me personally this has been the best feedback i've ever received the way we generally will do it is uh, i actually sit next to that person ask him to go through it you don't talk to him if he can think a lot that's great but many people can't do it and you just jot down everything that he's doing like when he's clicking on this you feel that he's confused you actually jot the, jot that down as well once he's done with the product review you actually talk to him and figure out uh, what was his perspective when he was looking at certain uh, feature what exactly he was thinking about so it's not a private beta it's a personal beta yeah <laughs> it's a new term you heard you heard it here first <laughs> yes yeah, uh, we are a giant company right so big boys uh one thing that i believe made a huge difference for every end customer uh, was a concept that we called uh, a new feature that we introduced called example so when we started writing uh, content uh, we realized that rather than just explaining a concept through the text over here a best way to show a programming concept is actually show him an executing code uh so over here basically both these are exercise blocks and you will have incomplete code example there the user is supposed to fill in uh, complete the code example and then submit the code what we came up with was something called an example code where in the same box i'll give you a completed code block you just execute it and see the outcome a very simple concept right like there is nothing rocket science here uh and we are very very uh, aware of people are going to get confused because of this so we added this text example code over here i showed it to three people uh, all three of them were my local clients actually and every one of them went there clicked something executed run and is looking at it like what do i do with this then he starts changing something he moves that question marks like changes some syntax over there executes it the test either fail or just giving some stupid outcome he said like, okay, what do i have to do with this this is already solved nobody read example not a single one of them that's why we came up with this idea of doing a distinction through color uh, this is really cool uh, so this is supposed to be uh, of a yellow sort of off whiteish background uh, we came up with a really simple idea that the background for example code and the exercises are going to be different and that was enough to tell people that hey, this is something different i need to have a different expectation and these kind of inputs we could get only after having these feedback sessions uh this was another part which came out of this personal feedback uh as he showed you we came up with the design where uh, a best way we thought to showcase our product on home page is to push the core functionality on the home page that is if i click on run the code executes over there and to our surprise this was the most misunderstood part of the website like nobody got what exactly to do after this even people who are experienced ruby developers they click on this they look around uh, the page for a while read code run learn which were unfortunately links what to do after that 
So we finally like removed everything, removed this, and as I showed you earlier, uh, we just changed that to a single link saying start learning to me now. That's all. It worked like charm. Uh, I unfortunately don't have statistics for that, but I can show you something else. Uh, I'll get to it later. Uh, another way to get direct feedback that actually started happening after 30 days, but nonetheless, it's a very important part. Uh, we were using this tool called uh, Webbing Page, and where people are pushing in uh, their feedback. We were skeptical how many people are going to do that, but we actually received more than 100 uh, feedback in a single day. Right. That's awesome. Good. Thank you. Uh, in that feedback, I just run through this. Uh, this is something I wanted to show. Uh, whenever you change design, there is a way to gather indirect feedback. Uh, when I'm moving from home page to the get started button that you can see over here, uh, we wanted to track how many people are actually click on, clicking on that. And we went through uh, three iterations to reach a level where the conversion rate was earlier 21%, after a certain redesign, it was 53%. Like unless until you have access to insight like this, you can't really make a decision. Don't make a decision based on just gut feelings. Uh, so that is pretty much the crux of all our decision making nowadays. Where uh, rather than getting into and sub getting into a subjective uh, conversation for half an hour, we just decide to do something which is cheap to implement and do it. Show it to as many people as possible. Like nothing beats getting user feedback. Uh, so yeah, um, at the end of this whole process, we did um, we, we didn't have this methodology as a theory that we studied before and then implemented. It sort of fell together because of the circumstances. Because it was a short time that we had, we had to release a product, and it had to be a working product on day thirty. Um, we we uh, we sort of found these ways of uh, getting around that by working together. It wasn't something that we'd done before, but it did seem uh, fit into um, some uh, theory or some assumptions that we'd had. So the most important thing for me and uh, was that you need to move from being a visual designer. Right? Of course, all of us know that. You need to become an interface designer. Right? That's the new buzzword. And of course, an experienced designer. <laughs> But more importantly than interface, you need to become a product designer. That's an extremely important step. Because you need to move from saying, what does a product look like, to say, how does it fit in with all the other constraints that exist? How will this product actually perform on the market? Right? And the best thing is if you can then become a product owner yourself. You look at um, what's happening in terms of not just the interface, not just the product, but the constraints of the company. You look at how much engineering resources do we have today? Uh, are they free tomorrow to work on something? Um, you look at what are the long-term goals of this product? And I feel like this step is extremely important uh, to move from becoming mere visual designers to becoming product owners ourselves. It also works backwards. Yeah. Right? So for a product owner, uh, when we started, uh, we were very skeptical about starting, like, getting into the design. Uh, at the end of this whole 30 day period, or even after that as well, what we realized is, uh, there, is a, there is a massive distinction between a visual designer and a product design itself. Uh, as a product owner, maybe you are not great at visual designing, but that doesn't really stop you. Sure. <laughs> Uh, but you, but nothing stops you from actually becoming a product designer because you actually understand the product best. You have been talking to so, assuming that you are talking to customers. If you are not talking to customers, you can't be a product designer. Uh, but if you are doing the right things, you can certainly come up with a pretty good design in collaboration with people who understand UX, who have done studies uh, around user behavior, or obviously like they, as a design, as a visual designer, or. A, Professional designer, you have a lot of insights that you can give to me. But as a developer, as a product owner, don't shy away from designing. You can add a lot more value to the designer himself. Uh, this is something that we used to say: design is too important will lead to designer. Uh, the crux is for developers as well as product owners to say that I understand something about it. Like 
I can take ownership. I have my opinions, and obviously a lot of responsibility comes with it. So we spent a lot of time reading about, like reading through case studies as well as to how people approach this in the first place. You can't just go and say that, as he was saying, that we can't just go and say that I have an opinion about this logo. Like you need to justify it. why. Um, this is more for developers that don't be afraid to get your hand dirty either in using fireworks or doing HTML, CSS. Just get into it. It's not really that difficult to do it. Uh, even with the first 30 days of development, one mistake that we did is we outsourced our HTML CSS. Uh, even though the company that did it was great, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what we have started realizing now is if, like what I was saying earlier, right, the iterative development, anytime you have any dependency which is not uh, deeply coupled with the your cycle, it's going to be a hindrance. So it's very, very important for people to get into this. Uh, this is a very important part. Uh, I can't say that this is going to work for every team, for every designer and every developer. Because from developer's perspective, you really need to uh, appreciate and respect designer's knowledge. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and uh, from developer's perspective, sorry, from designer's perspective, it needs to appreciate where product owner stands. One more thing to do now is uh, we have, so you can actually check this interface at staging.vimum.com. We are kind of going for new uh, features as well as designs. And more important than that, uh, there is a slide. Okay, there is a slide which we are using. Okay. So nowadays we are doing experiments with uh, continuous design and like, other things. Maybe next year we will share that experience. It would have changed, but not for the good. Uh, sorry. Uh, the question is, uh, if we had more than a month to develop this product, uh, would we uh, choose the same uh, methodology? Uh, in hindsight, uh, yes. If I know how this process worked out, I will choose, or rather we are doing the same thing now as well with Rubyman. Uh, in that, at that time, probably we wouldn't have. Right? But, so answer your question, yeah, that is the way to go over it for uh, even a longer project. So um, the process is, is a slightly scary process, right? Um, we're talking about essentially an agile philosophy. And this is a philosophy I've been introduced to by uh, Akash, the bunch of C42. I do think that it can work even for designers. You know, we need to move away from thinking of design as a uh, a process with fixed deliverables and outcomes and to move into a phase of continuous design you know, where you're not just having de uh, continuous development but you also iterate on your visual design you see what uh, needs to happen to you you're not afraid of cutting stuff that you've done uh, and you can actually work it into cycles uh, and release something so even if it's a six month process iterate on features reiterate, keep going over them redo certain things see how it's actually working. That, I think it's an extremely important thing for any product company out there. Any other questions? Yeah. When you're doing a product, the, the team composition, how does how it matters a lot. So this is what an insight. How is it for you? How is your team institution? How do you do it? So the question is, what is the team composition? Yeah. Uh, so we started with uh, one developer, then uh, like I kind of joined in uh, into the process. So we had two developers. Around four days down the line, we found uh, uh, Rahul as well. Uh, so we, we like these are the only three people who are involved from this company. Uh, we were uh, working with uh, Swavik for the HTML, CSS. He was directly working on the code base which is one of the reasons why even we could actually deliver it on time. Uh, but yeah, that's it for people. Uh, 
we have the trickiest question of all. Uh, how much data is required for decision maker? Uh, so there are certain decisions which we made uh, based on of uh, based on three feedbacks, uh, like feedback from just three users. Uh, things like the home page redesigning, all that happened with uh, more than twenty thousand users. Uh, I don't have a good answer to your question. I would just say go on a gut feeling where okay, I have this data. Do you feel it's enough for a given uh, problem statement? Uh, yeah, I, I really don't have a good answer. I'm sure. Okay, you're on the broadly. I mean, so at this stage, uh, most of our data is coming from uh, the funnels or Google Analytics, and that's at very large scale. Um, so we generally like nowadays we are, when we are taking decision, uh, we have about for any decision making at least ten thousand users going through the flow. No, so the A/B testing. Yeah. Uh, so we did conduct uh, A/B testing as well. Uh, but I personally found A/B testing working for a certain set of problems, not for everything. Uh, as I said, like my my best, uh, my most favorite way of getting feedback is sitting next to the person. But obviously, you can't do that with the person. Yeah. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Do you have any more questions? Anybody who wants to criticize the design shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Please. How much do you think it costs you for the development of three of you as a team? Budget. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the question is, uh, what was the budget or actual cost of doing this one month of development? Uh, it's a bit tricky because being a services company, we were always like looking at opportunity cost. That means if these two people are not working on the product, they are working on some like uh, yeah, with some clients, and the earning is certainly a lot more than the salary that I'm actually paying for this. Uh, but I guess in this one month we spent probably two and a half to three lakh rupees, somewhere around that. Yeah, in terms of salaries, in terms of infrastructure. Because when we released this, within like after three hours, we had to increase like yes, basically we had to push our infrastructure from one server to around five servers. So considering all told, um, yeah, it was around three lakh rupees. Let's take a question. One is, uh, what is your view on the eye tracking software or the 3D user, or what is your view on the using it for analysis of the check? And uh, second, uh, the thing is basically, what is the one-point variable in the city which is coming? So, we have two questions. One is, uh, what's our view on uh, eye tracking softwares? Uh, just to explain, basically, like you can get statistics about uh, based on either cursor movement or scroll movement. Uh, you can include some JavaScript and it will tell you that these many people were co focusing their attention on this uh, part of the application. Uh, that's eye tracking software. And uh, second question was if we had any major disagreements in the whole process. I'm sure we have a lot of questions. Uh, anyway, answering the first uh, question, uh, we haven't talked about this. Whole thing. Yeah, we, uh, we didn't use uh, eye tracking software. We didn't do, uh, we did very gorilla usability testing uh, throughout the process. We did not do formal studies on what users are looking at, which parts of the pages are getting more attention. Apart from the basic data that you get by our, uh, you know, the embedded analytics. So we didn't use any eye tracking. So we depended that. heavily on uh, Mixpanel uh, to <coughs> give me the funnel, that is basically the interaction studies, right? Like where exactly users are clicking. Uh, in hindsight, yeah, maybe that could have been useful, but uh, personally, I don't really trust that particular data very much. So, so where did we disagree? Um, we disagreed uh, several on various occasions, most often on the home page. Yeah. Um, more or less, at, at all times, I said, you know, sure, I love this agile process, uh, etc. But um, you know, if you give me too much, I'm I'm going to filter feedback. So that's a, that's a call that I made, and that's a call that um, an enlightened product company gives a designer the freedom to actually make that call. 
So that's an important thing. You know, work with the right clients. Don't work with everyone. So one of the very important part uh, aspects of having a collaborative design is uh, you have uh, stakeholders or product owners basically, right? Like from product owner perspective, if there is a feature discussion uh, as to what exactly you need to put in, uh, my call would have been the final. Like, okay, this is the feature we are getting in, this is the feature we are not getting in. In terms of UI, we would discuss whatever uh, like till the cows come home. Uh, Rahul was the final arbitrator. Like his call would be the final. So we had given these uh, like positions or you know authorities, and we didn't challenge those because otherwise it's going to be a big mess. So uh, one area I remember disagreeing quite strongly was the gamification. I thought it shouldn't go in. I thought the social aspect shouldn't go in. I still designed it. Um, and though I think it's important to also, uh, if I look back at my sort of mental state, I don't think I did my best work on those bits. So it's extremely important. This goes back to the point about being a product owner. Once you move from just being a visual designer to a product owner, you're able then to do your best work because you believe in really what's going to come out of it and it's not just, you're not just working on features for someone else. So, and eventually we did leave the game. That's because of the estimations. Okay, thank you. Thank you.